Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Bay City Chronicles Presents Next Gen. Things might look a little different, but the more they change, the more they stay the same around here. The gang is back together! <laughs> uh, not sure if referring to them as, as a gang is the best way to go about it, but uh, the crew is all here. We have got uh, OPT Lawyer, we have got Noraystra, and we have got Chameleon Ice. So, uh, Nora, welcome back! It's been a while. Yeah. Did, did, did you finally feed the gerbil powering your internet? <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. Oh, <laughs> oh, the cat's eating it. Oh, and they mistook it for a chicken nugget. <laughs> you, you know, there's a reason why we don't have any other animals in this house. <laughs> yeah, for those wondering, uh, one of Nora's cats has need for chicken nuggets. She pinned down a small child yesterday and stole his nuggets. I was on the I was on the call with Jeremy when, when that not happened. Even joking about it. I heard wow. it. He's not. <laughs> huh. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so it's been a while since we've been here. Uh, it's been almost a month actually since we've been back here in the throes of Bay City. So I believe we've got a previously on that we probably should talk about, uh, if for anything, because Nora ain't been here in a while and he probably wants to know what went on. What shenanigans have y'all been up to? Oh, well, geez, many nuts. Many well, shenanigans. Last time, we opened up the comic in Media Res, and y'all took down a horde of devils. Yes. In some fascinating ways. Well, most of you took down a horde of devils in some fascinating ways. <laughs> so like a standard Tuesday around here. Yeah, cool. and uh, Charlie got lucky. Yeah, Charlie got very lucky. It was, <laughs> that was probably one of the funnier parts of the entire thing. So after that, uh, you were taking down devils because you had uh, made a deal... With a different, a devil of a different sort, uh, Gianna's mom, who basically said, "Hey, you go stop the Brimstone House, and I'll make it so you can potentially rescue Alex." So y'all went and took down the Brimstone House. Uh, my initial plan as the GM was, "You're gonna go and stop a couple points of the ritual, and then and do it that way." No, no, you said to heck with doing it the easy way. We're just gonna attempt to stop the ritual by magically breaking through the circle. Yeah. Which worked, except for the fact that Sassy got possessed by a Balor demon. Yeah. Then you had to fight Sassy possessed on top of the roof of Stormbreaker Tower. It was epic. It was. It was very epic. <laughs> and the most epic part about it is somebody popped a moment of truth. And basically ripped a hole into uh, hell, in, from, from reality, into the dreaming. Yeah. Above the city, so everybody saw it. Yes. Which also triggered something else at the end of the session, which we talked about afterwards, but didn't actually get publicly addressed here, so now we're going to do it here. Um, Gianna is... Well, something happened there. Chami, do you want to, like, tell us what's going on with Gianna? Well, after her incident, like, the whole dreaming bit, and feeling a lot more confident with her powers because she saved one of her best friends. Gianna is no longer a Nova because her powers are no longer wildly out of control. To some extent. Uh, she is instead taken on the mantle of the Scion, which means she's trying to differentiate herself from the evil legacy that her mother has set up for her. And now that you've ripped a hole into her dimension, the entire city knows. Which means that the evil legacy that her mother meant for her is kind of persisting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Legacies, they never go away. No. They don't. But with that, um, that's kind of where we ended off the last session. If you kind of want to get caught up, um, we have a YouTube channel for that. So please go ahead and watch that, but stay here live with us first if you're watching live on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube and you've randomly come across this one and this is the first time you've watched it, this is kind of episodic, so I suggest going back and catching the ones you missed. You yeah, know, if you feel like it. Yeah. So, welcome to Bay City Chronicles Presents Next Gen Issue 23. Something worth fighting for. This is a special issue. So this could be, the depending on, and I'm saying this depending on how far we get, this could be a multi-part episode. That's just the nature of how this is going to work. So this is not another Thousand Heartbeats situation. Dang it, I was just going to say that. Game. I don't believe but, you. Exactly. So 
what we have here for something worth fighting for is we have variant covers. The prime cover that most people that get sent out is a very simple cover. It is, well, um, I, if you are paying attention, OPT question, do you have the, the, the player overlays down at the bottom where you can see the icons? Yes. Like not our pictures, but the character pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, okay. Um, so, you mean on so, like Roll20, right? Yes, yeah, on yeah, the video. Right. People can see it. Okay, so what I want everyone to do for a second, just so I can give you a good description, is where my name is down there. You'll notice the picture has changed. You'll notice the picture has changed to Alex's avatar. That right there that you see, the half morphing helmet, half Alex face, that's the primary cover that you see. But the variant covers that we get, the half that's covered in the helmet is the exact same. But there are three other variant covers. One, where half the face is Charlie. One, where half the face is Gianna. Oh, sorry, there's four variant covers. One, where half the face is Drake. And one, where... You're not sure how this works, but it's a picture of Flo reading the co comic where he's half the face of the ranger. And it's really weird, but it's Flo, so we don't ask questions. We just go with the flow. Right. Exactly. That's why he names himself that. Exactly. Took you that long to figure it out? No, no. <laughs> so we open up the comic. And where we left the last one, we were on top of Stormbreaker Tower. We open up the comic in some place completely different. We get the, the, the sort of the wide-spanning view of just this beautiful, lush-looking area. There are grasslands, there's mountains. We're getting a bunch of scene shifts. And all we see throughout all of it is just shadow. A shadow here, a shadow there. And it seems as if the shadow is darting from place to place. And then finally we turn the page and we get a big overarching look of this area. And, hey, Drake. Yes? Why don't you describe what this area looks like and where you are and what you're doing? So Drake, being gone for a while, has been in the Dragon Realm, um, dealing with Eternus's minions, shall we say, the remnants after the uh, moment of truth Drake had where he charred him into oblivion. So Drake has been cleaning up the remaining leaders of the organization, kind of putting everything back into balance because, you know, once you lose a leader, there's a power vacuum and everyone wants to be the leader. And so the places you see are the different elemental planes that Drake is crossing through to fight these demons and villains, along with a new plane that we haven't seen, which is the shadow plane, where the demons truly spawn from. So, so you, you get this image, you see Drake, again, golden hair, you know, not necessarily in dragon form, but he's in his Kaiser form. Uh, running around with a sword, just slashing demons left and right. You just see demons flying and exploding, and just, there's carnage everywhere. And from an artistic point of view, this is artistically very similarly laid out to the devil carnage from the last issue, just to show the parallel. Nice. I like it. So basically what's happened is Drake is playing uh, Dynasty Warriors. Uh, I prefer Hyrule Warriors. Okay, yes. no, that's good. That's a good one, too. I like that let's one. Be honest. Let's go Goku. Let's go Goku, basically. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. Drake is playing the Pokemon version of that. I forget what it's called. Pokemon Conquest or whatever it is. That's, <laughs> it's not, but I'll take it anyway. But is that a, <laughs> wait, is that a real thing? Yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon Conquest, Conquest is the game. It's awesome. Oh, jeez. Yes. But, 
But while this is going on, so a, a couple of upgrades. Drake's no longer using a cell phone. He now has a direct communication to the goose that the goose can you know connect through because he's in the dragon realm. Um, yeah. It works a little differently. It's more of a, a, a single headpiece that has uh, some different information, some HUD, uh, just a little flare text there. But um, more importantly, yeah. and this is unknown to anyone, Drake has forged two more Dragon's Tears. Ooh. Hmm. And so one of them, and both of them have been provided to the Goose. Goose, would you like to explain what you've done with those Dragon Tears? Oh! So, <clears throat> and, and the Goose, pulling a, taking a page out of Flo's book, is sitting in his chair watching TV, and as you say this, the Goose stops, pauses whatever he has recorded, uh, it's totally Tiger King, and stops and does the full turn looking directly out the comic page and starts talking to the audience. So, what we've done with these dragon's tears? Well, the first one was kind of easy. You know, you walk up in a park, you look adorable, you see someone feeding the birds, and you slip a dragon's tear on them so they don't know it's there. That was the easy one. Even if she was a valley girl, she's cute and she's oblivious, so that was the easy one to do. The other one, that was a little bit harder. That took a little bit of doing. Thankfully, and I mean thankfully, every now and then, uh, they tend to show up here a little bit, so it makes it a little easier. And the last time they showed up here trying to find where Drake was and to leave whatever his name was, who, who can't, I don't even remember his name, uh, I was able to uh, slip another one into uh, the, the lovely afro of Miss Gianna. It's fantastic. We'll address those in a little bit. <laughs> One, I thought it was a poof. It is a poof, but there's an afro back there. So okay, it's, 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 let's be on, let's be honest. So you, you you smash cut to Giada, who has no clue. Chibicabra pops out, and he's got he's got <laughs> the, the necklace the on. on. <laughs> In the midst of Giada doing all her crazy dimensional changing things, like yes, Chibicabra's Chibicabra like, Chibicabra. like, Hi. just pops up, and you just see the little dragon's tear around his neck. <laughs> It just they just dives back in and it just like, gets stuck there again. Yep. Translation, it's okay, folks. <laughs> no, translation, I'm a trained professional. Ah, Editor's you. note. Editor's note. He is not, in fact, a trained professional. He is not trained, nor a professional. But but like I said, we, we will discuss what those dragon tears are for in a little bit. So, um, Teach, back to you. Back to me. Okay, so... Um, we are going to fast forward a little bit, not a whole lot, but we don't need to play off, you know, climbing down the tower and, and the entire city being in awe of what the heck just got ripped above my city. Right. So what we will do is we'll fast forward to where do you guys go to decompress? Do you go back to Gianna's house? Do you go back to Charlie's hotel? Do you go inside the tower because you happen to be right there? Well, we're still missing people from the tower, right? Like, Casey and all of them aren't even there anymore? So Charlie is, as, he's just kind of silent this whole time as he's walking down, just like, okay, that, he just looks shocked. Like, you've never seen him like this before. So, Gianna's gonna be, like, walking next to uh, Charlie. She's gonna kind of look up. Um, <clears throat> that was, a uh, That was kind of weird, huh? So, Charlie stops dead in his tracks. He just kind of turns to look at her, like... Yes. And then looks back forward and just starts to keep walking again. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Like, he follows after. It's one of those things is like he's clearly going to say a lot more and they just settled that yes. <laughs> uh, we, sh we should probably go to my go to my house and talk to dad. Like after everything that's happened and I I basically called out to my mom. It might be smart to 
You, talk to him you, about this? You, you did a lot more than that. Yeah, I think that's a good place to go, though. That's at least some place. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you would have seen it, because I'm pretty sure the entire city saw that. But, you know. Uh, I, yeah. That was the thing. How, did you know? You know, never mind. I don't want to know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I, are you okay? I guess is the first question I really have. You know those things where you get really invested in doing something and you're really excited about it and it's all you can focus on and then you do it and then when it's over you forgot what you were doing before? Um, yes. It's kind of like that. Um, I just kind of feel blank right now. Oh. I don't really know how I knew I could do that. But I just knew. So, Charlie actually, like, steps by Giada's side and kind of puts his hand on, around her shoulder as they're walking, and he's just like, Well, that means you were supposed to. I don't know what that means, but... It still feels nice. Yeah, no, it's it's good. You, I mean, you say... To be fair, you did save the entire city from whatever they were going to do. Yeah, I, I we did. didn't even let them get that far. That's kind of the I, most amazing part about it. They were talking about different things and whatever, and then you were just like, nope, I'm just going to end this right now. Good for you, Gianna. I like it. somebody puts their foot down like that. Though, I wonder... Uh, everybody saw that, though, right? Oh, yes. Do you think I made things better by doing this? I, not, I don't have an answer to that one. I, I mean, again, did we save people doing it? Yes. Is the public going to understand that? I don't. I mean, wait. I, what? If we stop the Brimstone House, does that mean that um? Oh, what was that news reporter's name? Uh, I forget his name. I forget his name too. Um, Is it Preston something there? Preston, Preston Powell. Preston Powell. 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 Yes. Right. Yes. Powell. Preston. Technically, it's P. Preston Powell, but. Yes. Uh, but does that mean that Mr. Powell, um, is he, is he still, um, is he gone or is he, I don't know. is he still invested in this? He I wasn't on the tower, right? I have no idea. No. Oh. Honestly, when all that started, I was kind of not on the tower myself, despite the fact that I was standing there. I'm actually kind of worried what he's going to do after all this, like, how he's going to turn it. I mean, considering what everybody saw, there's not much to turn. They saw it, everyone's going to take it for what they think it was. Fair. Gianna, is your phone on volume, vibrate, or silence? Probably on volume. What is the text tone you have for Hunter? For Hunter? Mm-hmm. Uh... It's probably, like, one of those, like, happy bell chimes. Okay. You get the happy bell chime. Hey. Bring. Hunter. And she, she, reaches, she, like, cries out. She, like, reaches in and pulls out her phone. And the text message, if you look at it, just says, What did you do in all caps with about 13 exclamation points with a link to a YouTube video that is you tearing a hole in the sky? So, if she watches and Charlie's watching, get over her shoulder like, uh, huh. Wow. That, that looks a lot different when you're not in it. That actually looks a lot different from different camera angles. I didn't even <laughs> catch that happening. As he points yeah, you can <laughs> clearly tell these are from people who are down on the street. Right. right. So she texts back um, immediately saying, Hunter, so glad you're safe, smiley face. <laughs> He texts back, that didn't answer the question! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> also, stop typing smiley face, there's emojis! <laughs> Charlie, you're like, did you, did you mean to type out smiley face? I, I believe it's just a colon and a, and a ampers, or a end parentheses. What? No, that doesn't spell anything. Yes, of course, you're right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell Hunter to meet us at my dad's. That way we can just talk this over. Yes. Uh, so yeah, she's going to say, um, a lot happened. 
Uh, I don't really know all of it. Uh, meeting at my dad's. And she sends it. He sends a text back, uh, kind of busy. Someone just ripped a hole in the sky. I says, what are you doing? He sends you a picture that is just a pile of demons or devils. Just like a pile of unconscious devils. Oh, they're the case. And yeah, I will text back. Like, yeah, they're all knocked out. Oh, that has to be cleaned up, doesn't it? Hmm. Yep. You know, the video games make it look all so much easier. Tutter, do you need our help? He sends back, probably best if you lay low. He texts back a simple, oh. He responds back, again, hole in the sky. I don't think Hunter's going to be meeting with us. I don't think so either. And quite frankly, I thought we were supposed to be staying low in the first place. And now that happened. (laughs) Come on, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Considering that everything that happened, everybody saw it. We should probably take Mr. Moth. I don't know if I want to walk. Oh, yeah, no. Walking would probably be a bad thing. So you text back a quick thank you to Hunter. And saying, please stay in touch. And she'll call out Mr. Moth and... He sends back a text. Will do. Also, don't fly. People are still looking up. She doesn't get the text. No. uh, She's probably on to the mouth mouth by the time she actually even bothers looking at her phone. Uh, Maybe we can stay low. No, he's probably right. So, maybe what we should do is go down to the ground level, try to sneak out, and fly away, like, as he said, low, and not fly off from the top of the building. Well, maybe. Um, or maybe I could just take us there. Okay. Uh, hold on, Charlie. And she holds your she holds your hand as she um kind of like has a uh, Mr. Moth land them. And while he's landing there, and she's focusing with him and through him, uh, she's gonna do her little teleportation trick to blink them back to her apart her dad's apartment. Uh, you are not under duress. This is something you have done before, so I'm not gonna make you roll. We that way I don't appear at so- a wall. Right, so so that happens, and Charlie just kind of looks around like, like first like, oh, okay. Um, Gianna, warn you next time. Thank you. You're welcome. So she thanks Mister Bob and gets off. And yeah, he gives her little... room. By the way, so she goes uh, over to her room door and she knocks on it. Then thinks about it for a second, then opens the door. Did... Charlie just looks up. Did you just knock on your? Own? It's a habit. Okay. But before Mr. Moth goes away, he gives it a little, like, a, you know, he doesn't wear a hat, but a little tap, a little nod, thank you, dapper, sir. So. And Mr. Moth does the same. So. Meanwhile, Charlie kind of walks in slowly to the house proper, looking around for her father. I forgot his first name, but he calls him Vincent. Vincent, right? Vincent. Vincent! Vincent! John, I was going to call Mr. out for father as well. Yeah, Mr. Robertson. We're here. Dad, are you home? He is, as you walk in, he's standing there in the living room with that um, look on his face. Like, you've seen The Incredibles. You know the scene where Frozone's like, honey, where is my super pointing outside? Oh, yeah. He's got that look on his face, and he's pointing to the TV. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 can, I can explain. I'm sorry. He 
He sort of looks up. And he just tries to mouth words, and he can't. But Charlie's going to walk over and kind of, like, like guide him to the couch to let him sit down and just kind of, like, you know, like, it's okay, Mr. Robertson, just have a seat. Trust me, I've already gone through all this. It, and you, you start getting feeling back in the brain after a, a little bit. Can't believe you got on TV, too. I mean, we were t- on top of, like, a new... Weren't we on top of the news station? No, we were on top of Stormbreaker Tech. That's right. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I, well, yeah, so we're, we're on top of one of the most popular buildings in the entire city. Yeah. Dad, are right. we in trouble? Uh, no one's in, in trouble. Uh, this is the GM asking a question here. I'm going to need you guys to play out a scene for a second. I just got cat claws on my screen door and have to go let my cat in. No problem. Okay. So, <laughs> so Charlie just looks over at Giada. He's like, in trouble. Um, number one, uh, I don't think there's any kind of like law that covers what we just went through. If, because I, I don't think it's necessarily illegal to rip a hole open in space and time or whatever that was. Uh, so I don't think that's a problem. I guess uh, not. Um, but the other issue is, and probably the more prevalent issue, is that, well, as I mentioned, everybody saw that. And I doubt most most of them, if not all of them, understood any of it. And that's going to be the biggest problem, at least from what I can tell, is the trying to explain what in the world people just saw. Because I can tell you right now, they probably aren't going to get it. I'm not sure if that's going to be good or bad, though. I don't either. We may not even last... try to. Well, the last time, like, Mr. Powell tried to explain some of the things that we did, he made us sound like terrible people. Well, I said we explained. I didn't say leave it to those stupid adults. Well, how are we even going to do that? I mean... I'm sure there is some way. But at this point, your dad speaks up. <clears throat> no, you're not. Hmm? You, neither of you, are going to talk to that man about anything. Oh, no, not him. Or anyone else, for that matter. Oh. But, but everybody saw it. Exactly. And this city is already spun up enough because the last time they saw that hole ripped. Suffice to say, your mother did some horrible things. Mom so, did that too? Hers were for less altruistic means. Yeah, I kind of got that feeling when we met her. The city will have to form its own opinion. Because words, while they may speak truth, they might not ring truthful. Because Powell's got the city in the palm of his hand. So you're going to have to work extra hard to prove you are not your mother's daughter. How do we, how do I do that? Stand for everything she didn't. I don't even know what she stood for, or stands for. Just keep being you. Okay, Daddy. Dad? Yes. What am I going to do about school? Well? (laughs) 
And he looks for a minute. A smile crosses his face. A devious smile crosses his face for a second. Only for a brief second. Be better than them. You mean I'm still going? Why wouldn't you? Because everybody knows who I am and and they they kind of they see what I can do. And they're going to mess with someone who can rip a hole in the sky. I was gonna say. Maybe you've just become bully proof. Well, that'd be useful. That way Marty won't make fun of me anymore. Hmm. Oh, he'll probably still make fun of you because he it's will. Marty. But all you have to do is even pretend to rip a hole in the sky. Or if you really want to embarrass him, just rip a hole in his pants. <laughs> and yes, this is a 40-something-year-old man saying this. Right. Hi, cat tail and cat. Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> we are small children here at BCC. We are easily distracted by furry animals. Yes. As proof, see our other show, BCC proper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you know the other ones. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I've, that's actually very true at this point. In the okay. background, you hear Apollo's meow. <laughs> <laughs> that might be uh, more true than you think. Ooh. At some point. Not now. Later. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I'll do my best. I just... I, I can't help but be a little bit... A little bit worried is all. It's understandable. Can they throw me out for, for doing all of that? Can I get expelled? And did you hurt anybody innocent? I don't think so. Did you do it on school property? No. Did you do it to any student or staff member who works there? No. What grounds do I have to throw you out? That's what I was saying. I don't think there's a law that covers ripping a hole in open dimensions. This is Bay City. You'd be surprised what there are things covering. Actually, okay, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, I know I'm from 1996 and all, but I'm assuming... There's a lot that's changed between then and now. I mean, I'm pretty sure the last time I checked, the only thing that things wouldn't cover were... There is no murder insurance. Aside from that, everything's good. Let's see. <laughs> no, I see what you mean. I guess I was just kind of afraid that they would do something like that just because they're afraid of me. People will do anything to someone who's different. Just the way of the world, unfortunately. Does this mean I can have Sassy at school with me? Like, and everybody can see him? Do you really want that distraction? Uh, I guess not. He'd help me get through class a little bit easier, though. He would also be a distraction to everybody in your class. Because I don't know about you but I do not know a 13-year-old boy in the world who wouldn't immediately want to go and either pet and or ride on that. Oh, he's right. True. And Sassy wouldn't be able to resist. He loves giving rides. I'm pretty sure when he looks over at Charlie, you probably want to take to, to ride on Sassy at some point too, don't you? I mean... Yes. <gasps> you never <laughs> told me that! Well, I, uh, this is something I like to talk about. What you did that time. Yeah, your dad looks, it's like a semi-truck. It doesn't matter how old you are. The first time you climb up into the cab of a semi-truck, you get excited like it's Christmas. <laughs> anyway. So what are we doing right now? At this point, you see a little tail pop out of the poof. No, no, Charlie sees a little tail pop out of the poof. Oh. Hey, Chibi. <laughs> the, tail's like, the tail is waving, like, I'm stuck, help me. <laughs> uh, Ch Charlie, uh, Charlie's reaching out thing. Gianna, hold still for a sec. Yeah, my hands are too short, uh, my head's uh, too big. Uh, 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 hold on. So Charlie okay. kind of reaches in and helps Chibi out. So you pull. The only, the only image I have here right now is the T Rex from. 
from Meet the Robinsons. My arms are too small and my head's too big. <laughs> you know? yeah, so you pull on Chibi, and it takes you a couple things. Because like, so he pulls, and t- Chibi doesn't immediately come out. He's stuck on something. Hmm. So do you give a do we give a good yank? Oh yeah. Hmm. Well, he, he, so gives, you, he gives Chibi a heads up first, like okay. Hold on tight, Tim. Give Chibi the heads up, okay. Yeah. So you give Chibi the heads up, so Gigi, you feel a pull. Like, it hurts yeah. a little bit your hair getting pulled. So you pull Chibi out, and he's sitting there. And as he pull, gets pulled out, he, he's sitting there in your hand now, looking absolutely adorable with a Gianna poof, and with a Gianna hair poof mustache. <laughs> Ow. Sorry. <laughs> and then he looks and goes, and twists it like a Bond villain. You look devious, Ch- Chibi. He goes in, sets him down. He goes in, like, sets him down or something. I'm glad you're safe, Chibi. He's pointing at you, and then pointing at your phone. Oh, Gianna checks her phone. There's nothing on it. He, he, he like, jumps on your wrist, goes to your phone, starts pushing buttons, and it yeah. scrolls. It scrolls to Alex's name. <gasps> What about Alex? Hmm? Oh. I... Wait, no, no, didn't Call you? Him? Wait, didn't your mother say after, if we did stop the house, he was going to help you figure out how to get your friend or try to get your friend back? Well, yeah, it's the entire reason I did that. And Chibi points and looks very satisfactory, happy at Charlie for getting the charade game. Oh, sweet! Ch- he gives like the like holds his hand up for Chibi. You you get a high five. You get a high five. Then Chibi goes, so crawls back up, jumps back into Gianna's poof, swims back up, walks over to Charlie, and hands and, and hands him something in his little Chibi hands. Mm-hmm. And he looks at you and he's looking at he's looking at the space between your nose and li- upper lip very longingly. So he looks at what he's had being handed. He goes to reach up and put another mustache on you. <laughs> He's gonna let it happen. <laughs> and then he, he runs up and curls up on your shoulder, and then looks over at, looks over at Gigi and starts using one hand to stroke his mustache and the other hand to stroke your mustache. <laughs> I've learned to just let the ch- chibi just do whatever he wants. And I, it's, it's, much, it's much better when he's in a good mood. It's true. Reach over, pets him on the head. This is what he's less hyper. Right? <laughs> that means we have to contact my mom, though. My mom. Do we have her phone number? I forget. Did she give us that? There's no service in the dreaming. What a terrible place. Uh, what? <laughs> what, we can't dream up a, a cell phone tower in there? Yeah, well, around. you can't. Yeah, oh dear. Oh. <laughs> so Charlie definitely cannot. Right, yeah. Uh, Dad, do you know if there's any way to reach Mom without actually going into the dreaming? Not a clue. Because we kind of have to. <laughs> I don't have any idea how I would do, how you would do that. I wonder. It'd be kind of dangerous, but I wonder if I could try to go in, kind of on purpose this time. Entirely possible. What do you think, Charlie? I mean, the whole point of this was to see if we couldn't rescue your friend, so... Say we do it. Good. Okay. Uh... I don't know if I can do this right now. I'm not as energized. Uh... Okay. And she jumps off the sofa and kind of wrings her hands. Charlie, you notice, because the chibi-cabra is sitting on your shoulder... It's getting very bright. It got very bright around his eyes. For
That was that. I said, Charlie, you noticed that as Gianna's trying to shaking on her hands, you the chimpy cop eyes glow brightly for a brief second. So Charlie kind of tilts his head in the next comic panel. So he kind of gets closer. He's like, Chibi, you okay? You notice his eyes are a completely different color. Gianna? Yeah? Chibi's eyes just change color. She looks over at Chibi. Wait a second. You recognize the eye color immediately. Mom? <clears throat> he, threw a look, he looks up. I need to make better vessels for speaking to people. And why are you letting this have a mustache? It's what he wanted. I find he's a good, he's a much better chimicabra when he's happy. Duly noted. Anyway. Mom, we did it. Uh I know. You ripped a hole to my realm. I got to watch. How yeah. was that anyway, from your angle? Because it was kind of interesting from standing right under it. Have you ever seen a kraken rip a devil from a sasquatch? Uh, yes. It In just happened. <laughs> right. It just <laughs> happened, like, minutes ago. So other than have that one, ever, no. Have you ever seen it up close from the kraken's perspective? Uh, no, no, I can't say I have. I was standing on the rooftop next to Gianna here. It was quite enthralling. Mom, we did it. And that means you said that you were going to help us get Alex back. Ah, uh, that is not what I said. You said you were going to help, uh, you were going to give us a chance to get him back. That is what I said, because... Luckily for you, my dear sweet Oubliette likes to play with her food. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's really quite simple. All you have to do is travel inside your friend's subconscious and free him from her control. How do we get there? A place that has a strong connection to him would be a good place to start. As for the rest of it, you know how to rip holes into places now, my dear. I'm sure you'll find a way. I bid you good luck. And the chibicabra ball bows, and then it looks like he's just yelling at someone like, and you both can tell he's swearing. Oh yeah, yeah. Charlie just as he as once he finally finishes, Charlie nods like, "I agree." And he stomps over. Like, he stomps off, stomps over, goes over to the fridge. Like, anyway, he's tiny. Rips open the fridge door so it swings open. He climbs up, cracks open a bottle of Coke, and just starts downing it. No, Jimmy, that's sugar. You know, at this point, I think we should let him. No! Look, we're going to need everything as energized as possible. We might as well put him on a sugar rush at this point. He jumps down, shuts the fridge, climbs back up onto Charlie's shoulder, finishes the bottle of Coke, throws it on the couch, and... What do we say, Chibi? After that. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> we have to get to Alex's. <clears throat> I, I'm afraid of you having hips, Chippy. That's it's actually really scary. All right. Chippy, <clears throat> hold your breath. <gasps> Perfect. Don't let go. So, Keep holding it. Anyway, you're saying okay. Alex's place. Yes, we have to go to Alex's. I was there, yeah, I remember. We were there, like, the second time we met, I believe. That's right, we were. Like, we got last talk time we were there... Oh, no! Yeah, those dogs! Yeah. That was a thing. Let's go again! Hopefully that won't happen again. 
I hope not, but you know what? At this point, I'm next to somebody who ripped open a hole into a, a different realm. I feel like much safer now. Well, I guess at least Drake won't be there to fall into the sewers this time. Uh, Dad, we'll be back. Yeah, we're going to be back. And we're going to have Alex with us. He just looks at you both. Gianna, Charlie, yeah. don't get yourself killed. Oh. Charlie. What? And he gives you the stern dad look. You do whatever you need to do, but you keep my little girl safe. Do you understand? Dad. Of course. And he is shifting your labels. Yeah. He is shifting your danger down and your, and your savior up. Uh, I have to reject because my danger cannot go down. <laughs> you can always mark a condition. I mean, rejecting is fun, I'm just saying. Yeah, because that's probably going to happen anyway, because um, yeah, I I take, I'm insecure already, so. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that was close. Oh, well. Mm. There is a team in the pool. Uh, no, no, true. no, 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 don't, don't blow it no? on that. Okay, don't blow okay. it on that. Fine. Okay. I, I'm perfectly okay with this result anyway. On a miss, their words hit you hard. The GM will mark a condition and shift your labels accordingly. Actually, so you mark a condition. So you get to mark a condition. Um... Afraid, guilty, or hopeless? Probably afraid. I don't know. You want to be? You want angry, Dad? Yeah, it's a fair point. <laughs> and the change is—is is, it feels like he's putting too much pressure on you. Mm -hmm. So even though what he want, or the shift your label shift is actually going to be the opposite of what he wanted to do. Your danger is going to go up, and your savior is going to go down oh. because that's a lot of pressure. Wow. I see you nodding your head like, yeah, I expected that one. I didn't, actually, but it makes sense. Okay. Dad, I can take care of myself. He looks at you. I'm your dad. It's my job to worry. I know. And if you keep it up, I will do something even worse to embarrass you right now in front of a friend. Come on, Charlie, let's go. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Love you. Bye. <laughs> he, he looks over <laughs> at the Coke bottle that was uh, on the couch and just goes, and he's got a comic panel of, we've been over this. You know where the recycling bin is. So we're going to speed of plot to Ooh. Alex's house. Is that like speed of sound from Coldplay? Right? No. Oh. So then it's Clocks from Coldplay. Ooh, I like that song. Viva La Vida. I like that song better. I'm more joking yeah. that Clocks and Speed of Sound basically are the same song. Yeah, lines, I know. But, yeah. I mean, if we're, being, if we're being honest, if we're picking a song for this specific episode, I hate to break this out, but it's probably Photograph. Ooh, I like yes, that Yes, I went Nickelback. I was going to say Van Halen, or, or what was it? Yeah, okay, fine. I don't feel like nostalgic. Eh. For Nickelback? No, no, for Photograph, that's all. I don't know. I anyway, that. you're at, you're at Alex's house. Yay! What do you do? Kitty! Oh. Kitty! Is that the chicken nuggy thief? Well, first things first is we gotta try to, like, like sort of scope out the place to see if anybody's home. A.K.A. his mother. Well, uh, Gianna's immediately going to try to go and see if she can look into his room for that perch that we found last time, like, climbing up. Well, again, rather determine whether or not somebody's home at first, because, you know, if there's somebody home and they see us perched on the tree outside the house, it could be a little awkward. So, Charlie, are you saying you would like to assess the situation? Um, yes. 
Okay, then roll to assess the situation. No idea. Okay. Well, what that means is you don't get to ask the question. I'm not going to ask the question. Yeah. Uh, you do get to mark potential, so it's two potential already for you this Yeah, session. yeah, this is great. Um, and you're looking around, and um, you're definitely going to know that somebody's home because as you're looking around, the door opens. <clears throat> um, does anyone remember the voice I gave Alex's mom? Absolutely. Was it was an old Jewish mother. Was it, oh, it was, it was Jewish mom? Okay, it was Jewish mother. Yeah. It was Jewish mother in Alex. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who are you two? Oh, Mrs. Stanton. Do I know you, young lady? Yeah, we... I used to come here all the time and play with your son. I don't have a son. Right. Uh... I mean, not anymore. Oh, what happened? She looks... Uh, this is the GM asking a question. Yep. When did Alex's father die? Uh, Alex would have been, like, ten years old. Okay, so six years ago. Yeah. Uh, she looks, gets a somber look in her voice, in her face. Car crash six years ago. Both my husband and my son. Oh. We're um we're students in the local school with the um the kind of the yearbook club thing and uh we've uh, we've been going around to talk to the parents of different students. Uh sorry we didn't mean to bother you. Uh, must have uh, accidentally gotten the wrong address. My apologies, ma'am. Uh, yeah, apologies. Sorry. It's it's okay. But um, you know, we were uh, doing a small section in the yearbook for uh, kind of an in memory memorandum kind of thing. Um, which. Would, she, you, would you mind if we maybe talked a little bit about your son? She looks at you. An in memoriam. Thank you. Six years after the fact. Um, it's a... It's the first time it's ever been done. A far look back. Roll to provoke. Actually, I can't provoke. Huh? Uh, <laughs> oh, you can't provoke! I can't That's provoke. Right. <laughs> You can't. I can't provoke. Um. So. She had a, you gotta do this or I'm gonna have to do something really bad. I mean, she's trying to chime in saying it's. Please do. Yeah, I'm gonna. But I don't care who rolls it. Please I do. just want somebody to. I cannot provoke. I, I literally replaced that move with threaten somebody. I know. It's fantastic. It is, actually. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Okay, can I help? This is an important role to help with. You certainly can. So as Gianna's explaining things, like, I mean, it would be simple, something as simple as Gianna's explaining things, and as she falters, he fills in some kind of BS, whatever. All right. <clears throat> so, on a 7 to 9, I can either rush the bait, or they can stumble, You can they err, or they overreact. I think you can choose that. Yeah, he does. It's a May, too, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can choose. And uh, he, he, she looks at you. She glosses over Charlie, because even before, she's never met Charlie. But she is intently staring at Gianna. Gianna's doing her best Girl Scout impression. She's kind of looking all... You know... I don't know what it is, but I feel like I should know you. I feel that way too. I come on in. Thank you. So 
you walk in, the house is pretty much the same the last time we were here in comic. Uh, it still has that... Um, well, the best way I can describe how the house feels and looks is, for those who played Final Fantasy VIII, uh, this is basically Zell's house, and she's dressed like Ma Dinked. <laughs> yes. The house looks very lovely. It does. Well, thank you. When you and you have a lot of time on your hands, you get to make sure it looks good. Uh, uh can can we uh take some pictures? Uh, he, the, Charles just gonna hold his hand up for a moment, just like uh, Mrs. Stanton. Uh, uh, thank you for talking to us. Um, I was wondering if, um, obviously before the horrible accident, what was your son like? Energetic. I don't want to use the cliche and say full of life, but... Well, it's, it's a good description. Always would go out of his way to try and help people. And he was really smart, too. I at you. imagine. You're a strange... Wait a minute. I now know why I know you. Oh, no. You were the girl on the TV. Uh, you, you, you ripped the hole in the sky, didn't you? Uh, it was quite impressive, was it not, ma'am? Josh is kind of like fumbling and sh uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, that, that might have been me. That's, uh, that's impressive. You think so? Yeah. She looks, I don't know what it is. Something just feels like you should be here right now. And I also watched the interview you did with that jerk Powell. As we get cat cam on Nora's side. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Scenes Inspiration here at Bay City. Right. <laughs> Wrong game, right inspiration. <clears throat> yeah. Something about that man's never... I can't corroborate it, but... I, I always had the feeling that he had something to do with the accident. Oh, he's a monster, right? I don't know either for sure, but... He's definitely not a good person. No, he is not. I see him show up on the TV, and the first thing I want to do is to... Yes. I think that was a sensor. Right. Anyway. If you do, if you want to look around, his, his, I, I've left his room the way it was. I couldn't bring myself to change it. Oh. Well, thank you, Mrs. Stanton. She's got her over. She's got... Give her kind of like little hugs. It's a very stiff hug. I figure. We we won't stay too long, but thank you so much. And your son was very, very special. She just gives you this look like, who are you? So, you have gained access to the room. Neato. Charlie's it still gonna, is... Yeah, oh, go ahead. Charlie's, like, Charlie's going to give that awkward, like, thank you, Mrs. Dent, and they, can see, they kind of slowly kind of like, shuttle up the stairs. And she's gonna, like, before you go, oh. before you go, Charlie, she stops. Wait a minute, young man. Yes. You... 
Are you related to Chase Cassidy? You know, as a matter of fact, I am. You look so much like him. Only like 30 years younger. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. It's almost as if I went back in time from 1996 and just plucked myself out, right? No, no, I am related, though. So, do you know where he went then? Because the whole city's looking. Oh, I'm one of the ones who are looking for him, too. I have no yeah. idea where he's at right now, but, you know, maybe hopefully we'll be able to find him. You know, sometimes, you know, he's a reporter, you know, sometimes you just gotta go undercover deep and not tell anyone what's going on, so who knows? That's a fairly decent description. Now, fair enough, you just look the pot. Thank you. <laughs> He, he's got that smile on his face it's like I want to punch something right now but he just smiles like so he's gonna get up the stairs yeah. and you guys are up there as well <laughs> so you've gained access to the room it looks exactly like the last time we described it so I'm not going to go ahead and get back into that description bed, computer, the whole thing so you're here. Ooh. So we get in, clo- out, cl- um, Charlie closes the door really quickly, and he kind of leans against it, he's like, Whew. okay. Now, uh, you never we're going to do, we're probably going to need to do it faster than not, so. Right. Charlie walks over to his computer like, oh yes, I remember this thing. I still yeah, am not aware We probably don't need that right now. No. But. We're in his room, so this should be this should be just enough to be able to see if we can at least just find him again. Okay. And she kinda of like does that thing where she like raise her hands and okay, I'm gonna try it. Uh stand back, Charlie, I'm not sure. He's standing as far away from you as possible at the moment. Giving you the good like You're good. Just give it a shot. Gianna. So She's gonna try to open up a rift into the dreaming here to kind of make a nice little connection to the realm of the unconscious. Alrighty. Uh, do me a favor and unleash your powers. Okay, dokily. Wee! That was a good time to roll a 10. That was! It was. So, um, Chammy, Gianna, why don't you please describe what happens when you rip this hole into your friend's subconscious? And once you describe what happens, I will describe what it looks like. So, Gianna, she kind of, like, gets up near to, near to Charlie, uh, near to um, Alex's bed, and she kind of, like, puts her fingers into nothing as she's just kind of, like, starting to spread it open to see if she can just make a rift and you see this kind of gummy feeling of reality tearing around her hands. Oh god, you're peeling reality like it's an orange. <laughs> oh gosh. <sighs> so as you peel this open and step through this green, white, sort of twilight void, you appear, and some people might recognize the picture I'm going to use here, because I actually have a screen position for this. Ooh. Oh my god. You appear in the middle of this multi-directional hub. Each one sort of has a faded, like, platforms to get to it, and some sort of faded, foggy instance in it. Um, certain people may recognize the scene. I wasn't expecting you to, OPT. Okay, good. Oh, wait a second. That does look familiar. It's the live stream from Seven. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, where you dive into Cloud Subconscious. Yeah, that fits. I figured it was a perfect fit. So you and you and Charlie arrive in the middle platform. Okay. I'm not quite sure what to do next. Uh, Charlie's looking around like, well, I mean, at the very least, we got here. We did. She's going to kind of put her hands over her mouth. Uh, 
Alex? I kind of don't think that's going to work, Gianna. Alex! Gianna, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't think that's going to that's gonna do it. Your voice echoes through the twilight realm. Alex, 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 Alex. But nothing happens. Mm. That's kind of creepy. It was. Okay. Well, I gotta look around at least. Uh... Oh, wait a second. Right, we can assess the situation. You can assess the situation. But uh, before you assess this, the situation, allow me to describe what you hmm. So you're standing on that center panel, and there are multiple different walkways. Each walkway currently leads to something that's very foggy and covered in a very thick haze or a fog. So you would have to basically walk into the fog to see what it is. I see how this works. Charlie just kind of like starts walking towards one just to get close to kind of see this. And he tries to look inside and he's like, yeah, I can't see anything. Gianna, do you think this could be something? She's going to look at it and she's going to nod. She's going to start walking towards the fog. All right. She got also kind of like grab Charlie along. I don't want to do this alone. Yeah. No, no, he's gonna follow her. So you you walk into the first set of fog, and as you come out the other side, you are no longer in the green twilight realm of Alex's subconscious. You are in an old, run down, what appears to be boxing gym. The lights are swinging from the ceiling back and forth, giving a very ominous, creepy-looking vibe to the room. The lights above the boxing ring are shut off. The only lights that are swinging are the two that are uh, sort of over in the corner section of the small weight room and the punching bags. And... Well, I'm going to change things up a little bit. Hey, OPT. Yes? What section of this gym would we see Alex in? Oh, he's over at the punching bag and weight room right now. Like, lifting weights, doing squats, punching the bag. What Punch. specifically is he doing? Right now, he'd be punching the bag. Okay. Like, you know, punching, kicking. Just he's, he's working out hard right now. Yeah. yeah. So, he's punching, he's kicking... There is no form to the punches or kicks. No. It's just, it is angry teenager punching. Yeah. Um, this is probably, what, tw- Alex, uh, Alex at 12 or 13? Yeah, it's close to 13, yeah. Yeah. So, this is just angry teenager punching. Yeah. Huh. And even as you approach, you just hear the constant... <laughs> of the punching bag over and over and over until finally in just a rage you just just a guttural 13 year old scream and basically he star uppercuts this punching bag and it doesn't split it vaporizes and there's just a pile of sand and young Alex looking at his hand just going Actually, he'd probably be more like huffing and just staring at his fist like, huh. Like, he gets this look in his eye that um, would only shout really loudly to anybody who's, like, been 13 before. Like, oh my gosh, I am strong enough. Wow. Alex looks so young. He swings around. Oh, you can hear me. Who are you? Why are uh, you here? This, this place is closed. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Charlie kind of jumps like, I was not expecting that. Yeah, there was Gianna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Alex, um, it's it's me, uh, Gianna. <laughs> Charlie says, that this is like the thought bubble, like, this is supposed to be, like, he can, like, these are supposed to be memories, I guess. Why are we interacting with memories? <laughs> 
<laughs> he just looks and goes, I don't know a Tiana. I, you will later. Uh, oh, Alex, I'm so happy to see you. Uh, 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 um, we're here to save you. From what? Alex, this, this is going to be hard to, um, hard to hear. But right now, you're not where you are. Um, what do you mean, not where I am? I'm, 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 I'm right here. Even Charlie looks at her like, what? Also, OPT, hmm? what's the name of the old man who owns this rundown boxing gym? Think about that while we do the rest of the interaction. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Uh, Alex, we're, we're in a place called The Dreaming. And you've been taken by something evil. No, we're definitely in... What's the guy's name? Whitaker. We're, we're, we're definitely in Old Man Whitaker's gym? I know that's what it looks like, but all this is is a memory. No, 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 this is Old Man Whitaker's gym. He lets me use it after hours. I just I clean the place up. I'm done. Can have some interesting times cleaning that up, kid. Yeah, that's a little weird. I didn't know you could awesome, do that. Awesome, though. It's, it's definitely awesome. It is. He just looks, and then he gets the 13-year-old devious grin on his face. I wonder what else I could do that to. And he looks around, sees the speed bag, and goes to wind up to punch the speed bag. But completely whiffs and falls on his face. Because <laughs> over enthusiastic. Right. Right. Hmm. Debating something. What are we supposed to do here? Well, maybe if we engage with him. No, I don't really. The problem is, I don't know him all that well. In fact, I don't know him other than what you told me. No, you don't. But Sassy does. Okay. So, Jazz go look over at, uh, at Alex. Just gonna say, um, Alex, um, I'd like to talk to you a bit, uh, but if you're really interested in, like, seeing what you can do, I think I have a sparring partner for you who, who really misses you. How can you have anyone who misses me? I don't know you! Are you saying that you don't want to have a sparring partner that can... I'm saying you're things? being really weird! She does that. Just just, just go with it. It is kind of what I do. Wait, you're going to let me punch him? No, no, not him. Not but him. him. And she's got to point to her side. Oh, and It's weird. I just get the feeling like... I get the feeling like I'm going to be able to punch him. I really want to punch him. Um... <laughs> yeah. Charlie, do you want to be punched? Uh, not me, no. Well, I mean, I know he's going to punch me later, because I kind of almost saw that happen, but it wasn't me, it was... It, uh, you know what, never mind. Oh, that's right! In a really weird way, you kind of know him, too. Yeah. You two are... You know, you know how about this? How about you two leave? Before I, one, call the cops, and two, punch you both. Uh, I want to pierce the mask on him. Okay. Um, hold that thought. Okay. You are not going to be piercing the mask. Oh, but no. you are going to be rolling Monday. Okay. I told you I had a move. You did. You triggered it. Uh, note. Um, because you are the scion, you might see the little note I left in your uh, in your sheet. Because you specifically chose Alex in your scion respect track, oh, you no longer have influence over him in the sense of the word. So what does that mean? It means I changed the custom move we were using. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so goodness. you still get the role. But you don't get to do it with influence. Okay. It says I saw influence over him, though. No, I switched it. Oh, you jerk. 
<laughs> I have edit access. <laughs> For those wondering, I will tell you exactly what I wrote in the stream. It said Alex Stanton, and now it says, quote, the influence over Alex has been deleted due to the respect mechanic. <laughs> but I do need you to roll mundane. Okay. Here we go. Mundane. Oh, dear. This is bad. This it's is always bad. bad. Okay. So you were attempting to pierce his mask. Okay. But it, things work a little differently here. There's going to be different triggering things for how this is going to work every section. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to pierce his mask. Why were you trying to pierce his mask? Because I want to know how to get through to him. Okay. So. When you attempt to help a remnant, remember who they are. Roll plus mundane. On a hit, you help them remember a specific person or event that anchors themselves to who they are. On a seven to nine, you lose yourself in the swirl of their fleeting memories while doing so. Mark a condition. On a miss, you lead them down the wrong path. They lose sight of an important memory to them and grow one step closer to being forgotten forever. So, please continue on and explain how you were attempting to... Also, Mark Potential. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, John is trying to get um, Alex to open up to her. By, she's trying to start talking about like all the adventures they had together and like how they went to the dance together, only it wasn't with him. And how he didn't have anybody to go with, but that's okay. And she just kind of starts rambling on about like all these memories she has. It kind of sounds just like alphabet soup of like. Basically, you know? so even at some point, Charlie's even like, oh. So in all that, the only thing that this version hears is dance, and he just keeps saying, "Dance." I wouldn't go to a dance. No, no dance. There's no such thing. I wouldn't go to a dance. I wouldn't go to a dance. I never went to a dance. No, I wouldn't go to a dance. Not at all. And he keeps repeating that over and over again. And in the comic, we get a set of panels that's the scene of you guys at the dance. And every panel, it's drawn lighter and lighter and lighter oh, until no. it basically looks opaque and ghostly. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> And you get blown out of the gym. Oh. And you end up back in the middle platform. That is one tick on the Forgotten Remnant clock. So, do we get, like, like projectile thrown out of there? Or? Basically. Like a wind. Ah! <laughs> like, ow! Okay. Gianna... Maybe next time don't just try to give him all of it at once. Jenna, meanwhile, as she got thrown back, she was actually, she kind of like, my sassy kind of materialized behind her to kind of catch her as they fell. Uh, but as he sets her down, she's actually crying. And you can see tears streaming down behind her glasses. And she's saying, Charlie, I... I know, I know, it's okay. Ow. I think I'm starting to forget some things. The dance memories that you are describing, those are also very hazy right now. Huh. I don't know if I can do this. It's okay. What do you mean you're not remember? You know what? Just keep remembering the story about the dance you just told. Huh. There was a dance? So Charlie kind of looks up and looks over there like, oh god. Okay. That's not good. So, as this is happening, you look to Charlie, you look behind Gianna, mm -hmm. and 
if you remember sort of the, the first time, like the first Charlie episode, yeah. there was like the black tinted version of Alex in the Ranger suit. Oh yeah, I remember that. One of those appears behind Gianna. Gianna! What? Then, then another one. And 12 appear as if they're time on a clock. And you two are surrounded. So, Al, or so um, Charlie takes up a uh, sort of defensive stance as he runs, like, directly next to her and just to, like, looks around, keeping alert. And Josh is kind of looking around at all of them. Alex? Is that... Is that you? They don't say anything. We're going to save you, Alex. So Charlie kind of slowly starts walking towards one, kind of see if it's going to do anything. It. You haven't engaged it yet, so no, it's yeah, standing no, 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 there. No, no, no. And it's just, it's just, they're all standing there, arms down, almost like they're security guards. We're gonna go. We're gonna go down the other path. Right. But so, what are they blocking? Just out of curiosity. They're blocking. Like, you see the middle circle. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you guys are in the little brick section, yeah. and they're around the outside. They're blocking you from going anywhere. Okay. So he's gonna look at one, looking towards a new path. He's like, "All right, can we? Are we allowed to go through, or are you stopping us for some odd reason now?" As you go to, to talk to them, he, the one you talk to just grabs your hand mm. and throws you back into the middle. Ow! And that's when... Ba -ba -ba well, that wasn't exactly how I was planning this, but... Well, they're about to... Wait, you can see them because you sort of went to touch. They have now all drawn different, like, basically... Like ranger weapons, they all basically have like the ranger sword, and they're closing ranks. Okay. So, Bad. so one of them starts to charge Gigi, and from the poof, you start to see a rainbow light appear. The TV camera pops up first. <laughs> Wait, I've seen this before. The rainbow. Br uh, never mind. <clears throat> anyway, um, I believe I need to put something on the screen. In a while. Um, ba -ba -da -ba! <laughs> it's no so, so, yes, dramatic entrance has been rolled. Um, it was secretly rolled to me, so y'all wouldn't know what was happening. Uh, yeah, cause I did hear the, the bleep. I wonder what that was. <laughs> so, Drake comes flying out of this, you know, dragon shaped jewel on the necklace. Flying out fist first, right at the one that is charging Gigi. And uh... and so now I can I now can roll uh, to directly engage a threat using my choice of superior or savior. Yup. And we're going uh, savior. Yeah, he doesn't fall into water because he rolled an eight. Uh... Oh my god, he hit it! <laughs> he hit it! He hit it! It's only been what? <laughs> okay. Resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Oh, they're frightened. <laughs> You're damn right this, they are. This dragon just came out of nowhere and wrecked one of them. <laughs> just, how can, like, out of the dragon tier, just, like, full-on Superman punches this thing. It falls back, like, into the muck of, like, the twilight section. You hear a push, and the other 11 just... And I'll disappear. Oh. So, Alex, or sorry, Charlie is picking himself off the ground after seeing that, and he stares at the creature that's popped out of Gianna's head because he doesn't recognize it right off the bat. And, and she'd be just like, <laughs> right. right, yeah. 
and Charlie kind of gives his head tilt. He keeps watching for a while until um, Drake finally comes into view of some kind, and he's like, "The, the glow finally fades." Right? Yeah, there he, you go. He, there was, you go. Yeah. he was coming in fully golden right. at that point. Right. Mr. Dragon, and Jada's gonna run up and hug him. Drake, uh, wait, no, she's gonna step back. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you really Drake? Yes, it's it's me, Gigi. What are you doing here? Chibi, can I can I have that necklace now? So Drake catches the tear. And it just kind of hangs up. I had the goose slip this on <clears throat> just in case I was needed. You hid that in her poof for Basically. I hit it with the chibi cover in the poof. Right. I comb my hair. I was gonna. Do you wash your hair? Yes. The chibi cover was taken. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He can carry things. Yes. So Drake hands this to Jenna. Put this. He on. tore off the mustache again. What? You know what? I don't even want to know why it's got a don't, mustache. Don't I don't. I don't, don't want to know. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. And Drake. Drake looks at the chibi cover's eyes and can tell that it's had soda. <laughs> Yep. We, we, it soda. we had to get it energized for this. It was a big deal. Oh, God. Hope and to be fair, we didn't give it to him. He just kind of took it. But we, okay. I wasn't going to stop him. You got to have a lock on the fridge. Trust me. I, I have a goose. It's a thing. That's so, what I we, get, we get a scene. We get a scene shift to the... Trying to open the fridge and getting very angry because it's a padlock. <laughs> but so this Dragon's Tear allows... The dragon, the Kaiser, to peer through it and see the events going around around, around it. I made two extras. Where's the other ones? Oh, cool. One, Drake pulls it out. I have to have one for it to work. Mm -hmm. And the other one, Drake kind of waves his hand up and you see a portal and you see Nina. Like, I totally seriously, I said no ketchup on the sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> like the Drake closes close the portal. Yes. <laughs> I make sure the people I care about are protected. Oh. Oh, Drake, I, your timing is so perfect. Well, I, I've been handling stuff in the Dragon Realm, but I saw y'all enter Alex's mind and got very concerned. D did you happen to see what had happened earlier today? Oh, you ripped the... Yeah, 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 yeah. That was on TV. I didn't have to even look at the necklace for that Right, one. yeah, that was kind of impressive. A little scary. I was scared. Needed. But Alex's brain and Alex getting him back? Yes. Right, yes. I'm, Absolutely. I'm really glad you're here for that. I'm so happy that things are going okay with you. I was worried. I wasn't sure how things were going with the whole dragon realm after you made your, your transformation. Let's let's just say I stopped rolling poorly versus uh, Interitus. <laughs> he now rolls poorly versus me. <laughs> <laughs> the days have changed, sir. <laughs> no, but yeah, as, as, you're, as, you're doing, as you're doing that voice, the mustache has turned into a beard, and the chibi cobber is stroking it evilly. <laughs> so versatile. It is. I mean, you know. Probably, yeah. Anyway, Greg, if you look closer, that's def just just a little bit of extra of Gianna's poof. Are you gonna make me one? <laughs> he jumps up, dives oh. back into the poof. Oh, there's only so up, much. Yeah, comes back up, and he just got like a mound and sticks an evil beard on you. The poof is the same size. You're not sure how this it works. <laughs> it hit critical mass a long time ago. Oh. It's really it's stylish. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> How does it hold up the fire resistance? Drake takes it off. Immediately takes it off. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Besides, <laughs> dragons don't have beard. Well, I guess they kind of do. The bearded dragon. I was going to say, have you, I, I've seen... Anyway. So he runs over, takes the stuff that he did make for a beard for you, gathers it all up, and makes himself a poof. Actually, that's kind of cute. It is, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, all right, okay. We're here. We're in Alex's mind. Chibi Cobbler, pipe it down. Yes, I know you had caffeine. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> he goes and sits on top of Drake's head. So now Drake has. 
Drake, we we kind of failed a little bit already. Well, yeah, we were in one. So apparently, each of these lead to well, at least okay. So the one we went into led to a memory of Alex's, and we met. We were actually able to interact with the much well young Alex. I actually don't know how old he was when you guys knew him, but um, looks pretty young. Older than that. Uh, he's uh, vaporized a punching bag by punching it, which I didn't realize he could do. And then um, he saw us, which I thought was weird, considering we were in a memory. And Gianna here started telling him, just regurgitating on every single thing, and he kind of just got confused by it. So. I'm so sorry. That's okay, Gianna. Sorry. I did it so well. It's, he, John, it's okay. We... Apparently we have more than one chance at this, because look, we're still here, and there's still more hallways, so we know things not to do next time. Pat's your shoulder. Well, we have two problems. We need to not lose any more memories. <clears throat> and two, we've got to find it yet. I didn't think about that part. I think if we find Oubliette, we can save the memories. Oh. Instead of trying to, re trying to maintain them. Anyone want to pick a door? Uh, I think there's only two left. No, no, there's four. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, so Giada's going to kind of pick one and start going towards it. We were headed in this direction anyway. Right. Sounds good to me. So so yeah. as 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 we're walking towards this and Giada's kind of leading the way, Charlie kind of looks back, like, walks back with Drake set side by side and kind of looks over and like, so, um, Valley Girl, huh? What? Just curious how that works out. You know, she's a bird, right? Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. Dragon, bird, it's... It's just, you know, just don't... So, sometimes it's better not to ask. You're right, you know, fair enough, fair enough. I just, I, you know, being from, you know, 96, I wasn't sure if things have changed in biology yet or not or something like that, but... I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, 96? I'm like... The dragons are as old as the earth, along with the birds. Like, that's been a thing for us for a while. Oh, okay. You know what? Y'all just don't know about us. Yeah, I was going to say, they don't teach us this in history class. <clears throat> we keep it that way. That's, that's actually, that's actually my job, is to keep it that way. That's yeah. part of, <laughs> that is part right. of the role of the Kaiser, is to make sure that that doesn't happen. Media control. Right, so, so you're saying a falling into a pool in full view of the media, probably not the best start. No, that was pretty bad. Okay. That was, that was, yeah. Uh... Yeah. We should go. <laughs> it is good to see you again, though. It okay. is. Good to be here. Yes. So you walk in to the next set of fog, and uh, you appear, and this time you're in a familiar place to you all. It's the room you just sort of came from, but it's a little bit different. It's dark out. Uh, everything seems quiet. There's one light on in the room, and it's coming from the computer monitor. Uh, OPT. Please describe the age that Alex was when he did his hacking ditty, and what happened when he started to do so. So, I'd say he's about 15, like maybe late 15 here, but he's about 15 years old. As he's on his computer, he's, he's hacking away, and um, you see him, like... He looks like he's just having, you know, he, he looks almost bored, if you will, but he's not look, doesn't look like he's looking for anything specific. But at one point, you hear him mutter, secret tech, secret weapon technology? What is that? So he keeps going into it and do it, and you hear him say things like, oh, gosh, they got that firewall? Man, that was hacked three years ago. <clears throat> Oh, that one too? Oh, hey, look, they updated it. <laughs> oh, oh, that was heck yes, last year. <laughs> Somebody really should tell them about this. Oh, hey, what's this? And 
it pulls up on the screen like a blueprint for, um, well, his morpher, as you recognize it. Um, and it has all this, the, the schematics of the suit and everything like that. But the suit itself looks much more basic. Like, it, it looks, like, very plain compared to what you're used to seeing Red Dragon in. And suddenly, like, his eyes kind of, like, light up as he was, you know, doing the typing thing. And now he's staring at it like, oh my gosh. I think this is exactly what I was looking for. So, um, he starts frantically typing. He throws a floppy disk into the disk drive or whatever the heck it is. <laughs> Um, no, this would have been this wasn't too long ago, so this actually would have been a USB drive, yeah. It'd be a USB. Yeah, I'm stuck in '96, so um, so wrong he, character. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, so yeah, he thro- puts a, a USB drive into not into a outlet on his computer, but he's got something attached to his computer that he has attached to something else that is attached to something else that is attached to this USB drive because. You don't know exactly, but it's like, like you can just tell it's like this stupid security kind of thing that he's doing with this. Um, so he's like just downloading all of this stuff, and he's like, "This, this is exactly what I need." And I don't think this is the company you want to have something like this. So the next, after he downloads all of it, the next thing you see is him destroying the data on their server. And then after that, um, if I may take a little liberty here, um, this, like, the... And don't you're interrupted, the liberty's yours. Right, great. Because the scene kind of, like, wipes real quick. Um, like, you can feel, like, there's a bit of a time jump as Alex is, like, you get almost like a montage because we're going to have a montage. Um, even Rocky had a montage. Even Rocky had a montage. So you see him, like, you know, like, um, getting, um, coming home with like this in his book bag where there you know obviously should be school books there's instead a whole bunch of like parts like computer chips parts and things and he starts um you know putting them all together he's got like different tools and whatnot it's weird for a 15 year old to have all these things but he, he, he's got all the wrenches the screwdrivers everything like that and he's like even welding things to, um onto this thing whatnot and it takes um you see him like get things right you see him have this the morpher like in his hand and he like activates it you know hits the button and like it kind of erupts in fire and he's like ah <laughs> no. like and you hear his mom yell up from the bottom from the downstairs you okay honey yes mom everything's fine <laughs> so um so, uh, uh, it, you, you see him do the whole thing again, and he's got another one, and he, like, you know, clicks it open, and it's like, boom! And you see him, like, you know, actually transform into, uh, just again, the basic of the Sentai suit. And he's looking in the mirror, like, like, giddy, almost, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! This and looks so that's... plain! And that's <laughs> where I'm going to take the liberties back! Fine. As he's looking at himself in the mirror in the suit, he notices out of the corner of the mirror a poof. Just is it mine or is it Drake's? It's yours. Okay. So Gianna's gonna kind of like. All right, look, no, no, no. Uh, so yeah, so he sort of spins around, still in the costume. Who are you? Alex? You haven't met you you haven't met Alex at this point yet. He looks he immediately takes a defensive stance. What do you want? It's the red dragon outfit. First time. The, the what? Your outfit. It's your costume. The red dragon. It's a tr- what you called yourself when you saved the day. Right. So Charlie kind of holds his hands and is like, hold on a sec, Jana. Uh, Mr. Stanton, am I correct? Hi, Kitty. Hi. <laughs> Bay City Chronicles, where the kitties win. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Ba- Bay Kitty Chronicles. Nice. 
We just need a Tina sighting now, and we'll have a full crew. There you we go. Will. Then I'm all alone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's out there in my bedroom, sleeping on my bed. So probably on the couch tonight. So anyway, so whose bed? My or hers, <laughs> actually. So um, <laughs> so uh, uh, so Charlie looks over at Alex, which this is going to be the most in- weird conversation I've ever had in an RPG. Um, <laughs> so he he uh looks at him and says, "Mr. Stanton, correct?" Alex is fine. Right. We've seen you've uh, made yourself a, set, a suit, I see. Um, he looks... You're not taking it away from me. No, no, we wouldn't even dream of that. In fact, I'm proud of you. I'm happy to see this. You are going to try to save a lot of people, aren't you? You can't tell because he's in the full face front, but the mm-hmm. eyebrow goes up. He does the slow head. Oh, by the way, when you talk, you're supposed to like move your head around so we know you're speaking. <laughs> you'll you'll understand at some point. It, it... <laughs> Why do I get the overwhelming urge to punch you? Oh, you will. Don't get me wrong. He you, gets that a lot. You will. That's just a thing. He's got a very, very punchable face. It's not only that, but you will you... punch me, just not right now. Get to the point, or I will punch you. My point is, you are from what everybody. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet you, but these two have, at least in the future, and um, you're going to save a lot of people. At least you're going to try to. Do you remember why? Go ahead and roll plus Monday. This sounds like you're triggering helping a remnant. I do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, on a 7 to 9, uh, you're they're going to remember the event you're talking about, but you're going to lose yourself in the swirl of their fleeting memory. So once you're done with the description, you're going to mark a condition. Yeah. Oh, that should be a nine either way. Why? This, this, because that takes into effect your your your. Oh, right. Sorry, you're right. But it, the seven or nine doesn't matter right, right. now. And yeah, we don't have any team left in the pool, so right. Off. I need to. I should probably put team on this board. Anyway. Oh, well, right, it's zero, so it doesn't matter. Right. All right. So. And I don't have influence over Alex. <laughs> no, you don't. I would never would. Oh yeah. Well, I couldn't, because... Uh, anyway, um... So, what about the scrap? Sorry, if I'm, I'm off. You were talking about the memory. Right. So, who am I... I don't even know who I'm controlling at this point. You're, 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 you're on Charlie. Thank you are controlling okay. Charlie. So, Charlie... Alex is still an NPC, technically. Right, so... Scenario. Charlie keeps talking, like, look, I... I don't know everything about it, because I just know what they've told me. Um, your friends have told me about it, but you seemed very wanting to help as many people as possible, and you seemed like you had a very good, or at least a very passionate reason for it. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if you've ever explained it. My question is just simply, do you know? Do you remember why? This here is clearly a very pivotal point in your history, because you still have this memory despite everything that's happening to you. So he he looks up, and we do the Pokemon thing where you lock up, even though he's in a helmet. Right. And you both experience the same vision. And it's the scene when Alex was running through the streets, and he bumps into Chase. And they have their little stare down. And I believe that's where you punched him. Uh, no. I just handed him a, uh, like a very heavy man cover, manhole oh, cover yeah. thing. Manhole cover, yes. Right. Because he was, he picked it up and handed it to him, expecting him to, like, just be like, Oomph! and then instead he's just holding it, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was when I, that was an, oh yeah, by the way, Chase Cassidy. Yeah. It's a meta. <laughs> yeah. And, Surprise! Yeah. yeah. And Chase is like, oh, hey, so yeah. you just outed yourself. Cool. 
Yeah. So you get yeah. So you get that scene, and then we then we rewind time to the school. And the reason that Charlie is going to have to mark a condition in this memory is because he keeps going back and forth between them. But the scene in the school is Chase's cell phone being locked into Baby Shark. <laughs> so, Charlie, please mark a condition because you've had to listen to Baby Shark on repeat. You know, so I was bef- before you did that. I was going to mark like guilty because he was thinking <laughs> about how cha- like how chase like did these things to him and whatnot but now because that's happened i'm marking hopeless <laughs> <sighs> to be fair those are the only two conditions i had left so i'm at four welcome to the party i know and you're not a nova anymore no i'm not no so you do that and we get the, 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 the scenes for, and you go through, and you get pushed out again from the memory, but this time it's not violent, it's just the pushing out. And when you arrive back, because Final Fantasy VII did this well, and I'm just going to steal it. Go for it. In the sky above you, there is now a semi-formed picture of Alex, opaquely sort of hanging in the sky. And from a mechanical perspective, you have marked one tick on the helper remnant track. So, um, Charlie is holding his forehead like, ow. That was incredible, Charlie. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that again. Yeah. You get out and Chibi Cobra pops out of uh, Drake's poof and you just hear, Drake immediately grabs the Chibi Cobra and smashes it back into the floor. <laughs> that kind of brings back fun memories. Mm, you have a very strange definition of fun. So she looks up and. Oh, wow. I I think though that was good. We actually made some progress. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. I'm probably gonna have to leave most of that to. Uh, most of this to the those of you who actually have said memories, because I've been bouncing back and forth between memories I don't even know, and I feel like I lived it. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> basically, like Charlie's basically like, with that. My my idea for why he got a condition in the first place was is that like he's basically now experienced memories that he didn't actually experience. Mm-hmm. That is kind of trippy. Exactly. Yeah. So he, Super trippy. Yeah, so he's a little, like, got a headache right now. Deja vu? Is it from the memories or is it from the baby shark? Kind of, well, it's kind of a combination of both at this point. Like, those are not mutually exclusive. They are not. You still have three openings left. Well, we made progress in one. We can do this again. So Drake's going to pick the next door. Yay. Okay. So you walk into the next door. And you walk through the fog. And Gianna, you immediately recognize this place. Oh, joy. Remember the statue that you all broke in the park? Oh, yeah, we threw um, Eris against it or whatever her name was. It's that same park, but it's before that. The statue's still intact. There's an impromptu stage that has been set up, though. Is this... The first time? And as you you walk up, you're in standing in the back, there is a very captive audience and a very angry looking young twenty year old something or whatever standing on the stage, gesticulating about a performance. This was the first time that we fought together. Actually technically it's the second time. What? Remember the whole uh, issue zero, the first time we yeah. got together? Yeah, when the thing. team came together. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. First time yeah. in front of the Mecha people. T-Rex. Come on, Mechasaurus. I know the Mecha T-Rex. Mechasaurus! Oh, oh, right. <laughs> this is the second time that we fought together. Right. Interesting. I feel like I saw some of... Yeah, I saw this happen. I just saw Red Dragon. I never saw Alex. I still really don't know what he looks like. How'd you remember that? 
Actually, never mind. That's. You just saw what Alex looked like. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, before. I mean, you're still kind of parsed between times anyway. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But so, so he's up there. He's doing his. He's doing his thing where he's making all that show. It means just about now, uh, Alex and I should be coming in to save the day. And right on cue, here we come to save the day. It's mighty Gianna. Gianna, huh? what's with the red hood? Well, Alex had a red costume too, so I wanted to join in. And... It's my superhero outfit. For those wondering what happened here, please go check out the inaugural issue of Bay City Chronicles, Lost in the Limelight. Yes. I mean, it looks cute as all heck, but... Thanks! Did I really look like that? You weren't even there. You weren't. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you didn't show up till issue two. A classic. Yeah. So, if you guys don't interrupt at all, you get the whole scenario, the whole fight out in issue And before the confrontation can happen with Alex and Chase, mm-hmm. we shift to the sound stage. Hmm. And... Gianna's dad and Alex's blind uncle and I forget who the third person was. Uh, Mrs. Was... Uh, oh, oh yeah. Teacher. Mrs. Kerpopoulos. Yes, Kerpopoulos, yes. Yes, Kerpopoulos. I remembered it! Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're doing our own memory game here. Yes. I don't have that written down. I remembered it. Nice. Uh, to being captured and you all on Stage Fright's little stage show. Okay, Drick, you're here now. Mm-hmm. Was it always this pompous? Um, probably. You were. You were no, really I good. I was gonna say something, and he wouldn't know that. <laughs> I was you gonna say really you were good. always hungry, but I, I, yeah. Charlie wouldn't know that. Yeah, this is what we saved him when we confronted Stage Fright the first time. It's where Alex got to punch him. Wait, Stage Fright? Oh, can can we can we punch him? Can I re- look? This is just a dream thing. Can can we just go? Can I just go punch him again? Alex has to punch him first. Why? But but wait. Is this a dream? It's a memory. Or is this... Right. But in the memory, didn't something trigger us before we started the fight? What do you mean? What do you mean? So Drake walks over to a switch and hits a light switch that turns the light on to stage right. In the in, in the robot stage right or the stage right up? On the the stage. stage right up on the top. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we get the scene of Alex jumping up and punching him and Drake getting up there and just going, him. <laughs> going full hog. Oh, yeah, then Nessie broke the big water tank. I forgot about yeah. that. Yep. 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 Nessie broke the water tank. I was going to say, that, that should have started with the, the uh, stage fright saying, the, uh, you know, the thing about the red dragon, the camera going on Drake because he was a red dragon. It's like, not that one, the other one! <laughs> <laughs> remember, this is memories. These are Alex memories. He will so, remember that. Yes, but, but he might forget it because keep in mind, these are memories yeah, that yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. I know I He's know. holding on to bits and pieces yeah, of them. I know. Um, I know. So, and at this point, actually, this is the first time you've gone deep enough in a memory that you notice something wrong. Oh. Well, this is also the first memory you would notice something wrong in. Okay. As they go to punch stage fright. Stage Fright is able to dodge both of the punches and sort of slinks away, basically balcony jumps and starts to slink away out of the stage. Wait, no, 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 that's not right. We have to stop him. Charlie goes running over towards Stage Fright. As is Gianni with Sassy in tow. Drake's going to be a little, yes, I know this is going to be shocking, a little more stealthful. Okay. Not, not directly chasing, but observing from the balcony still. Okay, so, um, Charlie, you said you were running after slithery, slinking stage fright. Yes. 
Also, that's a pain the butt to say. I, you know what I said? <laughs> so what do you do? Um... He is going to... I don't know. Well, I know what he wants to do. Um, wait, no, I know. Hold on. He's going to yell at Stage Fright. And be like, yo, like just, hey, ugly face. You better stop right now or I'm going to drop an anvil on your head cartoon style and you're not going to want the encore from that. This is the most out there threaten somebody I think I've ever... We're in a dream, so, you know, he's playing with it. So, yes, anyway. Uh, this Whoa. was a pretty good threaten. I mean... Yeah. Uh, Oh! Hey! Hey! If you're gonna if you're gonna hit something, that's a good one to hit. Right. So if you're gonna threaten somebody, you should scare them. Right. So replace po re provoke someone with this. When you threaten someone, say what you want them to do and roll plus superior. On a hit, they either do it or they are put at a significant disadvantage against you. Their choice. On a ten plus, either way, they mark a condition of your choice. Okay, so first things first. What condition are you? Um, hopelessness. Hopeless. Okay. Basically, because he's trying to make it like it's hopeless to run away or whatnot. You're not getting away no, from us. No, that's fine. And he stops. It worked. I'm so happy. Then, I got to be a <laughs> And then he stops. And then his head does the exorcist thing, where his body stays where it is and hit turns 180 degrees to face. Ah. You. Huh. Okay, did not expect <laughs> Drake, that one. Drake, Drake sees this from up top and yeah. immediately knows something's not yeah. right. Well, and then, <laughs> then he looks, Oh, you're going to what? <laughs> <sighs> what are you? The head sort of Flicks, looks. <laughs> I am hungry right now, and you're disturbing my meal. Oubliette! John just, she's gonna say sassy! And she's gonna like signal for sassy as I give a knife. Hook to Oubliette's face. To directly engage a threat. Oh, geez, okay. Uh. Nito. Now, remember, you have new moves you can use. I do, and I'm debating using them because it's a bad time to use it. Yes, it, but it's a good time to use it at the same time. That's true. It's like a bad fit. time to use a move. You know what? John's going to do it. It's a bad time to do it. She's going to choose. They don't deserve forgiveness. Okay. When you accuse an enemy of being irredeemable, you can mark two conditions to take influence over you away from them. When you directly engage someone who has no influence over you, you can always choose one additional option, even on a miss. So John is going to be shouting out an oopley, this is all your fault! <laughs> Bad news for Gianna. She now has all five conditions marked. Whee! Good news for Gianna. She is a angry little poof. Okay, so, choose two. Thank goodness. Got to resist or avoid their blows, because I'm scared. Uh, but she's actually going to, um... Oh, where is it? There it is. That's always the right choice. Yes, until it's not. Sometimes it's more fun for it to not be the right choice. That is true. Uh... Like, the only time there's a wrong choice is when you choose to flee or take... Definitely the impress, choice. surprise, or fright the opposition. Okay, so you have Sassy just wail on this, on, on stage fright. And you basically, you punch the disguise off of stage fright. And Oubliette is now standing there. You know, the shadow being, you know, ink from Batman Beyond, for those who don't know oh, what yeah. I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> what in the world is that? So... Drake has been waiting for his moment up in the tam, up in the top, 
and he is going to directly engage. We'll start with the roll before we describe one, how. Okay. One second, please. <laughs> I just need. I just want to do the joke. So Oubliette sort of looks, looks over at Gianna, completely ignoring Charlie at this point. Looks right over at Gianna because Gianna was the other one in the room when they fought. Yeah, yeah. Because Drake was too busy dealing with Man Bun. That's true. <laughs> Man Bun still hasn't recovered. No, no. And the uh, swimming pool. Yes. So Oubliette looks. You were the one I was initially wanting, but your friend decided that he would be a much tastier snack. And as he says the word snack, Drake comes flying out of the rafters, full fire red dragon, ready to breathe fire. Okay. I believe we're directly engaging here. I believe you are directly engaging it, unless you have a move to. No, we're we're torturing this guy, Drake. Okay. So Drake, instead of actually breathing fire, you see his fist turn into this blazing ball of fire and just cold, well, hot cocks <laughs> <laughs> right in the right where the mouth would be. After it finishes saying the word snack, you just get this. Okay, choose two. Uh, obviously, we're going to avoid and we're going to uh, surprise the heck out yeah, of it. Yeah, so the same thing. So you just, um, well, because I've described them as basically ink from Batman Beyond. You full force fire punch in the face and, well, you've now got an ink puddle. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. That, that can't be right. Drake, that was nice. Good job. Yeah, fuck it. I've been wanting to punch that thing. I missed the opportunity to punch that thing the last time. Yeah, we dealt with it. As you look around, the edges of the memory are starting to fade. Alex, get to wow. Alex. So Gianna's got to rush up the stairs, kind of breathing laboriously, to get up there to that state, that studio. Alex, we're we're here to save you. He looks at you. Save me. We came together. We did. And we got her. He looks. And. Now that you've taken that. He, he, he looks. There's an unconscious stage fright behind him. Got who? Oubliette. What's an Oubliette? That, Oubliette. She's the thing that puts you here in the first place. And we're here no. to take you home. That was the thing that put us here in the first place. He kidnapped our family. Yeah, he did, Alex. But... Gigi, are you yes. okay? Uh, I... I don't know. Uh, okay, I will let's, be... Let's, let's just get Drake and go home. And he, just sort of, and he just sort of grabs you and jumps down off the balcony. Ah. So he sees Drake and who are you? Directed at Charlie. Bystander. Innocent. Hi. You saved me! Drake, why is there a bystander on stage with you? We, we, we saved him. Great. You have a fanboy. I, uh, mm. I mean, look, he's dragon. Uh, I, uh, so am I. I. I'm the real dragon. You're cool, too, though. Can I punch this one in the face, please? No, well, I mean, you no. will, just not now. You will, though. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Right. If you wanna, it's very punchable. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Uh, so. Do me a favor. That's going to trigger helping a remnant remember them. Throw plus Monday. Who? <laughs> Oh, him. That would be great. Thank God, because I don't want to do it again. Although my influence, mon influence will apply. You my, have it. My mundane is plus three. <laughs> right. But wow. this is bad. This is bad for uh, for Drake. I should have influence here, right? You do have influence over him. Yeah, my, sheet, my sheet's all messed up. I need to get it fixed. Yeah. 
Oh, Never yeah, the whole thing. Un- yeah. Uncheck angry, though. Yeah, uncheck angry, so. That would... He did. He did. Oh. Are we still out of team? Oh, yeah, we are. Have you done anything to earn team? We engaged against a dangerous foe together. Actually, no. Technically, we did engage a dangerous foe. As a team, even. Actually, yeah, there were all of us in there. There's a puddle on the ground showing it right now. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's buying. As a GM, my answer is always, if you can sell it, I'll buy it. So, um... So someone used team, figure it out. Oh, who, who's the leader? Well, because uh, I'm going to give you, we're going to all the team here, so we're going to revert back to the punchy happened. Huh? So who was the leader? That was, was Giada going Giada first. Was the leader. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gigi, do you have influence over Drake and Charlie? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Right. What is everyone's purpose in the fight? Stop Oubliette. Take down Oubliette. Stop okay. Oubliette. Um, does anyone mistrust anybody else? Not here. No? No. And were y'all, I don't think y'all are ill prepared because you kind of an issue. <laughs> yeah, we went after him. We started and finished that fight. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You have four team to play with. Do Wee. note that, I'm not, that you're not getting the, the, the engaging, you know. You know. What? So, anyway, somebody can help out here. So, yeah, Giada then is going to pipe in, then. She's going to say, uh, well, yeah, you did punch him in the face already. And you did it really well. So as this happens, Drake, you find yourself washed into a mass of memories that are Alex's. Some are somewhat familiar because you remember them. Some not so much. But the one that keeps popping up over and over again is the scene where Alex finally punches Chase. And it's just a repeat over it's basically a gif over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's rather entertaining, actually. <laughs> um, but after about five minutes of that gif... Okay. Can we keep, yeah. um, also, that's, that's hilarious. And uh, uh, so after about, about five minutes of that gif, you know, roughly speaking, uh, you end up uh, basically... Uh, back in the the dance the the, the not the dance but um the it's the fake. carnival carnival oh here where Gianna teleports off by herself to stop defuse the bomb and you get this sudden pang of guilt as you let the little girl go off to defuse a bomb by herself and please go ahead and mark a condition as you find yourself lost in the swirl of their fleeting. I think you told me which condition to mark already, even. I did! But you had the options here. And then you slowly get blown back out gently. From a mechanical perspective, you have hit uh, section two of the Save a Remnant box. Mm, it's like a fresh spring breeze. Right? Hmm. <sighs> are, we, are we closer? I think so. The, the thing above your head, the Alex above your head, Definitely looks more filled in. I'm gonna say yes. We need to keep going. My head hurts. Mine too. But if we don't keep going, Alex is gonna be lost forever. Right, right, right. So, Drake is going to... You don't quite understand how this works because the, the the headset doesn't work in the real world. It's a Dragon World thing. Hmm. But Drake is conjuring the image of the goose in front of him. And you don't know how. And he is triggering words of the past. Oh, beautiful! I love this move! <laughs> when you seek the guidance of one of your elders or a member of your legacy, tell them the problems you face and ask them a question about the problem. They will answer honestly and tell you what to do. Take plus one ongoing if you listen, or if you go your own way, mark potential. 
He looks... All right, before we do any of this, he looks around. Oh, you're in somebody's mind. Yeah, it's a normal day around here, right? Yeah. When you get back, you're taking the padlock off the fridge. The key? Is on the I got wings, I can't use it! You have a beak. It's it's on the door sill, you know. Just you know, flap up there, get it off the door sill. Yeah, you know, it's like you hide it from little kids. It's all. It's not a big deal. Huh? And he says hog. He doesn't hug hog. He says hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so getting it when I get home. Mm. So, what's up? And obviously, you're not in the dragon anyway. I see the thing worked. Yes, that was excellent. Thank you. We have a problem. And that would be? We're in Alex's mind, trying to save what apparently are memories and stop Ubliet. Ah. I've heard of her. It. That. You have? Rumor and innuendo. I mean, I'm figuring this goose has probably been around as long as the dragon clan itself, and he's probably heard a few things. He's old, yes. You don't have to put it that way. That's why I was trying days. to put... That's Kids why was, these days have no respect for their, their honking elders. Right? That's why I was trying to put it slightly more professionally. That's why I always liked you. Thank you. How do we defeat Iliet without having to trigger any more memories? Can we? That's the key, that's the catch here, kid. You probably can figure. You'd have to if you want to not trigger any more memories. You'd have to find where she's hiding. It's probably in the most powerful memory because if she's gonna be there, I mean that's the memory she'd be in because once she gets that. Once she has control over the most powerful memory, the rest of them are going to come easily. There's always, everyone has that one memory they always go back to. That's where she's going to be. So if you don't want to have to go and piece through all the rest of them, find what that strongest memory is, and that's where you're going to find it. So where, how would we find that one? These all look the same. They do. Well, Here's the only other advice I can give you. Let me ask you a question. Why did you become a hero? Who are you asking? Everybody. I'm, I didn't become a hero. I came here to stop myself from becoming what I became. And that's why you became a hero. I don't know if I'm a hero right now. You're selflessly going into somebody else's head to save some. That's a hero in my book, kid. That is pretty heroic. We're looking for the memory of Alex's decision to become a hero. What triggered that? We almost saw it earlier because we saw everyone. Him getting and the goose looks at you. And before I go, just remember, everybody has something worth fighting for. Okay. Now I'm gonna go, and he starts. You see him flop off and fly up and get the key. And then that's the last thing we see of the, of the Conjure. So Charlie stands up and kind of like starts looking around like, how do we know which one that is? Maybe it's actually influenced by what we're thinking about too. So I have an idea. Let's all of us try to think on well, hold on why we... Well, hold, hold on a second. I just said why I became a hero. He points to Drake. Drake, I'm assuming because your bloodline kind of got in, forced into it. Gianna, what about uh, you? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I chose to after a certain point. I understand that, but I'm saying you probably didn't start off thinking, I want to be a hero. You probably want to be a hero now, but... My guess is you got thrust into the spotlight. I ate a lot. <laughs> I was kind of the same way. Uh, 
I I wanted to be a hero because I wanted to help people, but also because the people that I was being a hero with, they were kind of my first friends, and I wanted to spend more time with them. Alex was very secret, not necessarily secretive, but very guarded. He didn't have many friends, just us. That we know about, yeah. Gianna. Yes. Think back for a minute to the conversation that you had with Alex's mom before you ended up. Yeah, uh, the conversation about like what he was like. What did she say he was like? She uh, said he was full of life. And? Uh, that he was always wanting to help people. Okay. If you would, if somebody would like to assess the situation, we can do it that way. Or if you want to continue to work it out yourselves, you can do it that way as well. I want to assess the situation. You have all five conditions, Mark. Is that a good idea? No. Oh. But my, I, 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 I'm negative too, so I don't really want I to have, assess the situation. I have a zero, and guilty is the only thing I don't have marked. So technically speaking, I would probably be the best at this. You yeah. are also a part of the conversation, so you could do it. Indeed. I'm gonna I'm gonna work this, assess the situation a little. It's basically gonna be more of an insight role than anything. Okay. So you think back to the conversation that you had. He would do whatever he could to try and help people. And that keeps playing in your head over and over, and over. And then it finally clicks. Who's the one person he couldn't help? Charlie looks around and he's like, wait a minute. Okay, so Alex's mom remembered that he was, that both he and his father were killed in an automobile accident. Uh Uh-huh. We know Alex didn't actually die in that uh, that car accident. Well, at least you guys do, and I'm assuming I do as well now. So, maybe his father died in that car accident. Maybe his father is the, something that... His father's death, maybe that sparked this? Because he couldn't save him? What if it wasn't a car wreck? As far as we know, it was a car wreck. As you start to have this conversation, the twilight around you starts to shift. And it starts to fade away. And as it rematerializes, you're back in the Stanton's living room Hmm. with Mrs. Stanton there and a 10-year-old Alex. And just as things materialize, you hear a (laughs) on the door. OPT, do you want to do this one or do you want me to? I got it. Okay. So (laughs) This is all you. So, you know, Alex and his mother are just in the living room watching TV or whatever, and... The wheel is on. Right, yeah. So, um, you know, the door knocks, so his mom gets up, goes over to the door. She opens the door, and standing outside is a police officer. And he's got that look on his face that no police officer wants to have when he goes to a house. And he does the, you know, Mrs. Staten, I'm Officer um, Mitchell. Can I come in? And he comes in, and she closes the door, and she looks, she, you know, she's happy to see him as a police officer, whatever, but she's like, oh, yeah, sure, come on in. And as, you know, she keeps looking at him, she starts getting more and more, like, concerned, like, what's going on, and and Alex is there, and he kind of walks over, and the police officer looks at um, his mother and says, I re- I'm sorry, I have to tell you this, but your husband was involved in a car accident earlier um, this evening. And she's like, oh, oh my gosh, where is he? We, um, is he at the hospital? 
the officer is kind of like frowns and says, well, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, he didn't make it to the hospital. We couldn't get anybody there in time to save him. And poor little Alex looks more than a little distraught at the news because he heard it and obviously like at that point the month the, his mom is you know shocked horrified crying but trying to also stay strong because alex is standing there and if i may this yeah, is where you're i'm good. going to yeah, you're fine. You're in. as they go to do the hug thing yeah, and you because again he said the uh, we couldn't get the make it we as they hug Gianna Drake and Charlie hear Mrs. Stanton whisper, and there's no one here to save you either, to young Alex. And the form of Mrs. Stanton morphs into an inky blob with a white face. And it was not over. We're here to save him. She looks. You're too late. No, we're not. It's never too late. If we were, if we were too late, you wouldn't still be here. You're in my realm. <laughs> No, we're in Alex's realm. And you don't belong here. Neither do you. And she lashes a tendril out at G. Um. <laughs> I want to defend. All right, that's why I was giving people a chance to. But you don't understand. I want to defend, Jeez. but um, in actuality, I instead would like to use my moment of truth, sir. It is all yours. Moment of truth. You fought, struggled, and worked so hard to figure out who you are, whether you're just the same as your future self or whether you're different. But right now, that's all out the window. The distinction between you and your future self, the distinction between your future self and your present self vanishes in the face of the trial before you. And you become exactly the powerful, adamant figure that everyone fears or hopes you'll become uh, one day. You could do exactly what your future self could do, and everyone around you sees them in you more clearly than ever. Of course, after this, it's going to be hard to treat you as two different people. So Charlie stands up and he looks at this ink blob and he's just like, no, 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 no. I think I see now why I wanted to become a superhero. This is wrong. You shouldn't be here. You're killing somebody innocent for no reason other than your own pleasure. And apparently you were going to kill her first. And now you're attacking her. I'm not going to let that happen. I promised your father I wouldn't let it happen. So he holds up, like, his hands, and where he's normally shouted before because he's, you know, inexperienced with his sonic powers, he instead, like, snaps his fingers, and you all just, like, you hear this, um, oh, you hear this sound that just kind of travels through, like, the whole place, but it doesn't hurt your guys' ears, but it does, like go into the Oubliette's form, if you were. And there's, like, this, this sonic wave that continues to just go into, like, into and through this ink blob. And it starts shaking her and, like, making her vibrate down to the her very molecules to the point where after a while and after screams of pain, it absolutely just disintegrates. And as that's happening, 
as it's happening, um, you see Charlie getting angrier and angrier, actually, as he's, like, just pretty much screaming at the top of his lungs, like, I can do anything I want to to save anybody I need to. I absolutely know I can do this, and I know why I wanted to be a hero now, and this is it! As he's basically mercilessly destroying this thing in front of all of you. And once it's done, he kind of just falls to his knees, huffing, just like... <sighs> so while that was going on, uh, Drake did reach into the Dragon Realm, pull out a bag of popcorn, and just share it with Chibicabra. <laughs> yep. So, as Charlie falls to his knees, exhausted, the memory of the living room fades. And you are, as things start to rematerialize in front of you, you're all back in Alex's room. Gianna, Drake, Charlie, and Alex. Standing right where he was when he made the deal with Oubliette all those episodes ago. And it's weird because he's standing there and has a, weird look on his face. That look where, you know, you know something's happened, but you don't remember what. Alex? He's a PC again. He ain't mine. (laughs) (laughs) Alex is... uh, Probably, oh yeah, he's... Well, he'd be sitting at his computer then, right? Yeah. So he's sitting there, he kind of like, he hears Gianna's voice and kind of like gasps. Like, oh, ow. Never mind. I saw what? I am. Wait. Gianna. Alex! And she runs towards it, just immediately jumps on you. But, oh, God. okay. Hi. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm really stiff. Ow. Ow, 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 love you too. You're great. I can see you. The Chibi Copper jumps off of Drake and is also hugging Alex. Oh, Chibi! Hey! Hey, hey! Drake Drake kind of peels Giada off of Alex. Oh, thank you. Drake. You're hurting him. Yeah. What? It's been so long. It has? So long. Oh. Hey. What did I do? I feel like I was sitting here. I remember thinking something. I remember I agreed to something. Also, who the heck's the guy in the suit? Yeah, that's a long story. Charlie waved. Yeah, Charlie. That's, that's Charlie. He helped get you out. Uh, it's a really long story, and I know it sounds really confusing, but you've been gone for a really long time, and you're home now, and you have no idea how much better that makes everything. I remember I was at the hospital. I went to the hospital. And things kind of get a little blurry after that. You weren't quite yourself after that. Oh, and then yeah. I, when I was here, then it asked me if I wanted to save them. I said yes. And I remember this plea flash at Stormbreaker. And then... I don't know. It feels like... It was, like, someplace, but I don't, I remember feeling kind of scared, but I don't remember anything about it. Also, you were stuck, oh, go on. No, go ahead first. You were stuck in the dreaming, uh, because of Oubliette. The w- God, is that that ink thing we fought in the in the the, the dance? Yes. Yeah. 
As this conversation is going on, Alex, you notice that there's something in your hand. Looks down at it. It's basically a trifold set of basically some papers that have been trifold. Huh. Opens them up. So, as you open it up, what appears before you is sheet music. Um, Gianna, Mm -hmm. something about the paper she just opened up resonates very strangely with you. It feels like there's something extra dimensional about the music. And the final panel of the comic is going to be zooming in on the title of the music. And the title of the music on the top of the page simply reads, An Eternity for Organ in C Minor. Okay. Thank you all very much for watching. On behalf of Chameleon Ice, Noraystra, and OPT Lawyer, I have been TGE, reminding everybody to, of course, as always, keep handling.